Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The message for this morning is entitled, Believing the Unbelievable. And our scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Christ has risen. And the response is, Christ has risen indeed. I'm going to try that one more time. I know it's not Easter, but Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. As much as we believe, not all do. For some, Easter was all about bunnies, eggs, chocolate, and family. Those may seem good, but that's not what Easter's all about. Easter is about our Savior, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, and what that means for us today. So what is the meaning of Easter? Does it matter? It sure does. The Apostle Paul said it this way, If Christ has not been raised then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. This morning we're going to consider the character of the disciple Thomas. He has been forever dubbed as Doubting Thomas. Perhaps you have struggled with your faith from time to time. Maybe you have gone through a season of doubt, skepticism, unbelief, or questioning. In John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18, we read that Mary Magdalene saw the empty tomb and reasoned someone stole Jesus' body. This morning, we're going to read another account from John where the person could not accept the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. This story will help us navigate our doubts it can provide us with a path forward to faith and life in Jesus Christ. So let us ponder and meditate upon the scripture from John chapter 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other, disappear, the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, the disciples were inside again, and this time Thomas was with them. And although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and pull out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. 
But these are written so you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So let us backtrack and let's fill in the backstory of John chapter 20. The author was an eyewitness to the resurrection. He went on to author three different other letters and the book of Revelation. In verse 31, we just read why John wrote his gospel. These are written so you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In his gospel, John used the word belief approximately 100 times. The other biographies of Jesus and the other gospels only use the word 34 times. Belief is essential for John, and Thomas illustrates why. To understand Thomas, let us discover what else we know about him. John gives us several key events that feature him. The first occurs a two days journey away from Jerusalem. Mary and Martha were in Bethany, an outer suburb of Jerusalem. Lazarus, their brother, was critically ill. They knew Jesus had healed the sick. So consequently, they sent for him. Jesus gets their request and sits on it. It was not safe to go to Jerusalem. The religious leaders wanted Jesus dead. The disciples knew this and they warned him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you and you are going there again? But Jesus did not care about the danger. After two days, he went to see Lazarus. The disciples were not going to stop him. So listen to Thomas's response in this scripture. He said to Jesus, let us go also that we may die with him. Thomas was willing to die in Jerusalem with Jesus. Does that sound like someone who doubted? Not to me. Sounds more like someone who believes. Thomas, at this point, was willing to die for Jesus. So what does that say about Thomas in chapter 20? Doubts can come after faith. Sometimes we're on the mountaintop, and other times we are in a valley. As long as we have breath, we can turn from our sin, trust in Christ as our Savior. And you see, our faith can fluctuate between strong and weak. If our hearts are still beating, we can believe. In chapter 11 of John, Thomas puts his faith in Jesus over his safety. A few chapters later, Jesus is teaching his disciples. In chapter 14, we find Thomas speaking them again. Of course, this passage is very familiar. It's said many times at funerals. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. John 14, verse 1. So why did Jesus want them not to be troubled? Jesus went on to say, in my father's house are many rooms, and I like the old version says mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. So what was Jesus saying? What was troubling? To the disciples about what Jesus said. He was telling them he was leaving. Now remember these men and women had been beside him for three years, day and night, rain and shine, everywhere he went. And now he was going to leave. So Thomas responds with anxiety. Lord, we do not know. We do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? One of the most beautiful setup questions ever. And Jesus said, I am the way 
the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, I believe Thomas wanted to follow Jesus, just as he did in chapter 11. But he didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. Sometimes Jesus could be crystal clear, and at other times, he was not. And even sometimes when he spelled things out, Jesus' words could be confusing. But Jesus doesn't seem to directly answer Thomas's question. Why doesn't Jesus speak plainly? Well, he does. But the Bible says we are born with blind. We're born blind. Not with physical blindness, but with spiritual blindness. We do not see precisely and accurately. God must open our eyes. Thomas' question doesn't sound like unbelief to me. He's just confused. He wants to know where Jesus is going. Like Thomas, we can believe but not fully understand. The apostle says, even as believers, we see spiritually through a glass dimly. 1 Corinthians 13. On this side of heaven, our spiritual vision is not 2020. So Thomas can be courageous and at other times confused. The third account of Thomas shows he could be cowardly. You may recall the event is the Garden of Gethsemane, the day before Jesus is killed. Judas had betrayed Jesus for about $200 or 30 pieces of silver, leading the leadership to arrest Jesus as the disciples slept. Arriving, Jesus woke his friends, the guards seized him, and the disciples ran, including Thomas. You see, Thomas believed, but when push came to shove, he trusted his path to preserve his life instead of the way, the truth, and the life. So Thomas could be courageous, he could be confused, or he could be cowardly. Now in chapter 20, we come to doubting Thomas. Imagine losing someone who meant so much to you, and you think you are responsible for the death of them. I think Thomas would have been depressed like most of the disciples. Perhaps he questioned why Jesus appeared to his friends and not him. Couldn't Jesus have waited till they all got together? Why was Thomas left out? Maybe Jesus was angry. Things were not supposed to happen this way. It didn't make sense. He doubted it. He could not believe it. Thomas had to see with his own eyes. Friends, which Thomas are you like this morning? One who needs proof? One who runs his own way? One who does not understand? Or one who would die for Jesus? Where are you on your faith journey? If you are doubting, you may need a sign. Maybe you have a bargain on the table with God. Jesus said we're blessed if we believe even without seeing. In Hebrews, the word of God defines faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 1, verse 1. Faith is not forever. One day you will not have to believe, you will see. One day you won't have to hope, you will know. And one day you will meet your maker face to face. And if you believe, you will have eternal life. Thomas had reason to trust Mary and other women and the disciples' testimony. We do too. There are many reasons to trust in Jesus' resurrection. But they're not absolutely necessary for belief. But nonetheless, there were witnesses as we read in chapter 20, 1 Corinthians tells us Jesus, before Jesus ascended to heaven, there were at least 500 witnesses at one account 
that saw Jesus, and 12 separate encounters with the disciples and others. People saw him. As we're studying in Dr. Jeremiah in our chapter 9 this morning in Sunday school, even though he was resurrected, his friends knew him, which gives us hope. Jesus had power. Jesus predicted his death before it would happen. In Luke 9, 22, Jesus told the disciples, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed on the third day be raised. Some of the disciples didn't hear that part. It went right over their head. Some heard it and wanted to ignore it. This is just one example of the many predictions and miracles of Jesus. If he could change water to wine, heal the sick, calm storms, walk on water, make food come out of thin air, predict the future, and raise others from the dead, could he not be raised from the dead himself? Number three, the tombstone weighed one to two tons and no longer blocked the tomb. Even those who argued against the resurrection agreed the stone was no longer in front of the grave. Add to that, no one ever came forward and said, yep, I moved it. Even the Roman soldiers, whose job it was to protect the tomb, acknowledged that it was open. The stone had been rolled away. So everyone who agreed with the resurrection and disagreed with the resurrection agreed on one point. The tomb was empty. The biographical account portrays the disciples as confused and cowardly and petty, and they lend credibility when it comes to witnesses. If they were to make this up, don't you think they'd show a positive story? They wouldn't show them confused. They wouldn't show that they betrayed Jesus. Not only that, we mentioned the first witnesses were women. This is a great for demonstrating equal equality for women. But however, if it was a made-up story, at the time, men did not believe women, even these women. The Bible describes the disciples calling their witnesses as idle tales. Women were marginalized and not even considered. Fabricating a story in this culture, a person certainly would have men be the first ones to find Jesus. They do not and add further to this narrative. Finally, the lives of the disciples demonstrate the integrity of their testimony. Christianity became, came from a small group. These men gave up their livelihood, left their homes, and ultimately they gave up their lives to spread the good news that Jesus rose from the dead. If they were to make this up, some of them would certainly turn away and abandon their faith. They would have used their message to make themselves wealthy and gain power and, and gain status. But no, what did the disciples do? They lived in poverty and humility and followed Jesus to the point of death for standing up for what they believed. One of my favorite stories in Acts is when the two disciples go past the blind beggar. Silver and gold have I not, but what I have I freely give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And he did. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is still in the miracle business. We have many strong reasons that Jesus rose from the dead. They're helpful, but where does faith come from anyway? Let's look at the Bible. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 says it is a gift from God. Thus, what do we do if we still doubt? We can do what Thomas did. Show up. Go back to the upper room with the disciples. Thomas didn't give up, run away, or fade in the distance. He hung in there. In today's world, there's a tendency for people to give up, disappear, divide, and flee the church. Thomas did not. And we can learn from that. And guess what? Jesus did come back. The doors were locked. He appeared and said, peace be with you. 
Like calming the storm, he calmed their hearts, turning to Thomas and saying, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. <clears throat> he gave Thomas, Jesus gave Thomas what he demanded. He knew that Thomas had said, he knew what Thomas had said. <clears throat> Excuse me. He knew what Thomas had said without even being present. Thomas must have been shocked. <clears throat> have you ever met Jesus like that? Has he shocked you with answered prayer? Or did you just believe it was a coincidence? I know some of your stories. And he has and God has worked in our lives. In our passage, Thomas responded, my Lord and my God. <clears throat> Thomas believed. He was not using God's name in vain. He was proclaiming that Jesus was not only Lord, he was divine. He was human and God, the second person of the Trinity, his master and his God. Thomas affirms how John began in chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. You see, Jesus was more than a man. He was God. Thomas is God and our God. Finally, Thomas believed. Do you? Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Where are you? Are you confused about your faith? Do you doubt your faith? Are you stuck trying to control life here on our own? This morning's message is look to Jesus, read and hear his word, be part of the Christian community, share your faith with others, trust in God, believe the unbelievable. Amen. Let us pray. God, thank you for being true. Thank you for sending your only son, having him die in our place and rising from the dead. Lord, we need you. We love you. Open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, and our hearts to accept you. Remove our doubt, unbelief, and skepticism. Fill us with faith in you. In your mercy, hear our prayer. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Our last song is in, I believe, in the garden. <clears throat>